This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Matteo Communications. Hello, my fellow people of the plant. Let's talk for a moment about brand awareness in the cannabis space. The industry is obviously becoming more crowded as it matures. So how do you effectively break through the noise? We all know cannabis marketing has restrictions that make our jobs more difficult. But fortunately, the kick-ass PR and marketing professionals at Matteo Communications know how to elevate your narrative while staying compliant. Their New York and LA-based teams have the connections and powerful storytelling abilities you need to propel your brand onto the national stage. Matteo refuses to let your bold innovations and ambitious breakthroughs fall through the cracks. They'll get your company in front of your most prized audiences via their specialties, which include PR, social media, investor relations, SEO, and more. Matteo shares your vision of normalizing cannabis for the greater good of society. They proudly partner with businesses across the industry, from investors and ancillary companies to large MSOs and local brands. No matter your business goals, Matteo is here to help. Email them today at info at matteo.com. That's I-N-F-O at symbol M-A-T-T-I-O dot com or visit their website at matteo.com to get your company the recognition it deserves. Hello, my fellow people of the plan. In this episode of Cannabinoid Connect, I'm talking with Brett Heyman. She's the founder of Edie Parker and Flower by Edie Parker. I really think you're going to enjoy this episode because we really talk about combining the fashion industry with the burgeoning cannabis industry. Before launching her company, Brett was the director of public relations at Gucci. Prior to Gucci, she held a senior PR position with Dolce & Gabbana. So obviously she knows what she's talking about when it comes to fashion. We talk about a number of things, which include fashion, cannabis, why she decided to jump into the cannabis industry, key learnings she took from the fashion industry and applied to cannabis, and some of the challenges that she's currently facing as an operator in this new space. So I hope you enjoy as you watch or listen to this episode with Brett Heyman, the founder of Edie Parker and Flower by Edie Parker. Brett Heyman, how are you? Hey, nice to meet you. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin. Yes, thank you so much for making time for me in the audience today. I got to tell you, Brett, uh, as I was reading off your accolades to my wife right before we started recording and you jumped on the, the Zoom here, I think she wanted to talk to you more than I do, which and I'm excited about talking with you, but her background is fashion. So, um, I mean, I know that you were the, the former director of public relations at Gucci. You held a senior PR position at Dolce & Gabbana. And now you've somehow blended in, you know, the world of fashion and cannabis. So really excited to be talking with you today um, and talk about that journey. So why don't you talk a little bit about your background and some of those roles that, uh, that I just mentioned that you previously uh, held? Well, thank you so much. Thank your wife and tell her to come on if she wants to hang out. Happy to chat. Um, Yeah, well, I just, I was always obsessed with fashion and started working at Gucci as soon as I graduated college um, in the PR department and sort of worked there for a while, left and went to Dolce, came back to Gucci to be the director of PR. uh, And then I had my first child, whose name is Edie. That's who my brand, Edie Parker, is named after. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, it's a, always very confusing when people are like, your name is Brett. What, who is Edie <laughs> Parker? It's very weird. Um, is so Parker her middle name? or Parker is her middle name. Yeah, it's a family name and her middle name. Got you. Cool. Very cool. Um, anyway, so I made a baby. And then I like to joke, if I made a human, how hard could a handbag be? Because I had always <laughs> sort of collected these vintage clutches and wanted to do something just a little bit more creative and a little bit more independent. And so I launched my own company in 2010 called Edie Parker. Nice. Good for you. So that was like, you built up your network, you gained the experience, especially working for you know such highly recognizable brands, right? So I'd imagine um, at that point, you're like, I'm off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I wanna do and, and start my own line. And so, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about Edie Parker and that journey. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I made invaluable contacts. I sort of knew how the business worked. I knew 
how PR worked. I knew how sales worked just from that experience. And also what I always say to people when they talk about starting their own businesses, I made money too. I mean, not a tremendous amount, but it's not like I graduated college and then like, you know, wanted to start my own business. I, I worked, I saved a little bit and I just, it was, I was a little bit more comfortable that if my business failed, I could get a job again. Um, anyway, Edie Parker started as a line of acrylic clutches uh, inspired by their mid-century predecessors, which as I mentioned, I had collected since high school. And all the bags we make are handmade in the US. And we started really, really focused on evening bags and then quickly um, launched uh, bags in all kinds of materials, but uh, acrylic is our, our core competency. And then we launched a line of home items in 2016. And then right around 2018, we started thinking about what other categories we wanted to enter into. And the traditional path, I think, would have been like, do we want to do shoes? Do we want to do jewelry? Do we want to do ready to wear? Um, and the answer was just no on all of those things. We felt like those were super saturated categories. We couldn't do them better than anybody else. And so this use of cannabis kept coming up in our office where we're a group of 10 ladies who all enjoy cannabis. And we just kept saying like, nobody makes cool cannabis accessories and nobody makes cannabis accessories that look like bar accessories. And they're either like hyper-masculine or they look medicinal or they're like, you know, NYU head shops. And so we thought, what if we took our lens and, and, trained it on cannabis accessories and smoking accessories and made things that were really giftable, really collectible, high quality. Um, and that's how the idea for Flower by Edie Parker was born. And once we sort of committed to that, then in earnest, we thought when we did like all of our dispensary research, we were like, you know what? Nobody really does this at a dispensary level either, or you know, with Flower, nobody makes anything that speaks to women like us when we go in there. And so we started working on a companion line of actual Flower and launched in California in May 19th. That is a really, really incredible story. There's a lot to unpack there. I love how you found that niche and you just applied what, you know, y'all knew that, like you said, the business, the sales side of it, all that experience that you'd gained. And then, but then you also had the hindsight, uh, the foresight, excuse me, to say, to, to say that some of these, you know, markets are saturated when you're trying to enter other product lines, right? It's, it's difficult. There's already people that have put their foothold there. There's only companies that are doing it. So you saw an opportunity with cannabis, which is a burgeoning industry right now. And, and what I think is really cool about that is that you mentioned that there were 10 ladies that, that were already consumers of cannabis. Was that one, were you included in that group as well? Or? Yeah, I'm probably less of a stoner than a lot of the girls in my office, but yeah, I mean, the way that I use cannabis, which is what we always talk about is like, I use it for a good time. I don't have like tremendous anxiety. I don't need it to be creative and focused. So I just like to get high and do fun things, but yeah, right. go ahead. No. Yeah. So I think that that, so like, I would imagine having that collective group of consumers, you know, maybe some more so than others, but the fact that y'all are in, in the community that's where you can start to really put your, your heads together and go, okay, well, what, what items, what products would be cool for us to focus on for the, for the, you know, this consumer, like the people that are actually utilizing these tools or these apparatuses or these, you know, bags or whatever related to the cannabis space. That's really awesome. So what did that brainstorming activity look like? Well, I think it was exactly what you said. Like, we're not about just putting out product for the sake of putting out product. I mean, even with our handbags, like when we, when I launched D.D. Parker, um, you know, people weren't using acrylic in the way that I wanted to. And now, I mean, like we've had so many knockoffs, so it's not hard to find an acrylic evening bag, but it felt like it was new. It was innovative. Well, innovative in a, in a reference to vintage, but the, even though just the way that we treated it and our bespoke program, like putting bags on, I'm sorry, putting names on bags the way that we do our initials or wedding dates, like that wasn't happening then. It just right. didn't exist. Right. Um, and so the cannabis brainstorm was the and same And it's everywhere thing. now, right? I mean, totally. like, not to say that like you can differentiate a Louis Vuitton from others, right? But, but it seems like even the lower... I don't even know what the word terminology would be, but something that's not as high, highly recognizable as a Louis Vuitton that everyone's kind of doing that, those logos or those letters or those. So it's, there's a pattern there, right? Totally. I mean, look, lo I certainly didn't invent logos. <laughs> Let me just take a step <laughs> back. I, I don't claim that. I just mean, we, you know, do this personalization right. program that didn't exist. And I think personalization has really blown up. And I think there's like, obviously we could go off on a total tangent on a separate podcast on why that happened. And this like, you know, need to have individual moments and show things off on <laughs> social media, but, but I digress. Um, so the brainstorm to answer your question what, for cannabis and cannabis accessories 
was the same sort of thing, which was like, what do we want to carry that we can't find? What do we want to smoke that we can't find? What do we want to gift our friends when we go, you know, to bring a hostess gift instead of bringing a bottle of something or a whatever? Like, I want to bring this beautiful hand-blown glass pipe that even if my friend doesn't really smoke, she's going to display on her coffee table. She's going to put it on her shelf because it's a beautiful item and it's just collectible and awesome. When I hear you talk, do you know, do you see that like as y'all are going through this journey that um, with Flower by Edie Parker, that you're almost even helping remove the stigma in a way that is associated with cannabis? Because just like that example you said, like if I have a bong or a, or a, a pipe, right? And even if they're not going to use it, it could be like a centerpiece. Like, so that right there is starting to remove the stigma if someone walks in their home and they're so open about that. Have you seen that play out? I can't tell you how much I appreciate your saying that because we talk about that all the time, you know, and I, everything we make, we try to make it multi-use. So exactly what you said, like we have beautiful items that even if you don't want to use them for cannabis, they have a place in your home. Um, and when we launched, that was what we talked about all the time. We had a boutique on Madison Avenue. And so all we talked about was this normalization of cannabis. Like here we are, this like slightly bougie brand that has like older women and these uptown ladies shopping it. And they were buying bowls, they were buying rolling papers, they were buying lighters because they appreciated like the craft. And I have to say, like, I think we got a lot of resistance, even like from some of our grow partners when we launched with the first company we launched with, because they were sort of like, oh, you make these thousand dollar handbags and you, you want to sell cannabis. And that like was totally missing the point. Like even with the handbags, they're not expensive because we wanted to make expensive handbags. They're expensive because they're totally handmade in America and Italy by skilled artisans who, who get paid a living wage, who get paid health insurance. Like right. there is a purpose sure. you know, with everything. And so I really, I really, really care about that just decent destigmatization and the normalization. And I, I appreciate you saying that. Of course. Yeah. And I, that was, I mean, that was just something that came up. Wasn't even in my notes. I mean, just hearing, hearing you talk, it seems like that would be some unintended consequence or maybe an intended consequence that y'all planned for. Um, and it sounds like you did because you're on Madison Avenue, you know, working to normalize the plant. And, and one kind of question to follow up on that is what was the, what was the traditional fashion industry's perception or, you know, uh, reaction to this at first? Well, look, I think that fashion at its best is, is forward thinking, right? Fashion sets trends. Fashion is certainly a very liberal industry. Um, and I think that it just like everything, I think it just takes people a minute to understand it. So I think when we said we were launching this cannabis brand, I think people probably thought like, oh, we're going to make bags of, you know, cannabis leaves on them. And so I think it just, it takes a minute for people to get what we're doing. And it's either the reactions, either like that is so effing cool. I love cannabis. I love these accessories. Like, I'm so glad you're doing this. Or like, I don't get it. I don't understand you make evening bags. Why are you doing cannabis? So, but when I talk about it and I like give them, you know, the story and my journey, they're like, oh yeah, cool, cool. So I think it's been okay. Yeah. And you realize that you've like just set your daughter up for like total coolness and success down the road. I mean, she's, she's named after a fashion company and now a, a, uh, you know, cannabis fashion company. So that's, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess so, but she could rebel and be like, how dare you use my name for those two things? And I hate them both. And you know, who knows? Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope. Right. Yeah, exactly. But I, I want to tend to go with the, uh, the, the other, no, it's going to be, it's going to turn out very well. So, well, um, another question I had is, you know, you are obviously a boss babe in the fashion world, right. With your whole accolades and your resume, and then entering the cannabis space as a woman, what has that been like? What what have, have been your initial, um, you know, kind of just thoughts around around that whole space? I mean, I think it's like most other industries. I think it's obviously male dominated, um, but I find that like even though it's a little bit more of a boys club than I'm used to, people are super cool. Like I haven't really met guys that haven't been open and haven't understood what we wanted to do, and and so like you know I get asked that question a lot, but my experience has been generally very positive. That's good. And do you feel like more women are coming on the scene or is there still kind of a lack in that area? Again, I think it's still male dominated, but I just think, you know, cannabis is still so early in, a, in like a corporate way and, and in, a, in the business, on the business side of it. So I think that you're starting to see now 
just more people from other industries coming to cannabis and like really talented people coming to cannabis. And I think that like women are awesome and women in business rock. And so I think that people in cannabis are being smart about that and, and just hiring great people and great ladies. And look, like I think as many ladies smoke as men. So I don't know why there would they wouldn't be represented sort right. of behind the scenes as well. Right, exactly. Well, under another lens, uh, entering this industry from the fashion industry, you know, cannabis is is the most highly regulated industry in the country, if not the world, I, I think at this point, right? So what has that experience been for you in terms of navigating the waters of all the red tape and the bureaucracy and the legislation like what has your experience been there really frustrating i mean the regulations are no joke and the crazy thing is the variations from state to state just getting smart about that and having different cr packaging from state to state is just extremely capital intensive extremely um kind of hardcore and and frankly just upsetting like you know it's like environmentally so unfriendly to do all that CR packaging it's unnecessary you could have packaging that's child resistant without having to have 45 layers um, and extra parts so look I mean I think it's just as you said it's highly regulated still it's early it's not federally legal so we have to manage our expectations but I really hope that we get smarter about it and it's and it's all like just products that are related to cannabis no no plant touching at all right but you are you still have to adhere to, to most of, or if not all of those regulations, or is there some differences from what y'all do or? So we, we I, I didn't understand the question because we definitely like, we're not technically plant touching, but we sell, certainly we sell the plant. You sell the plant like pre-rolls and stuff like that. We sell pre-rolls, right. we sell, yeah, we sell, we've sold vape pens and gram jars and ACE and all of that just has been crazy. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So that makes sense. And like, is there one in particular issue that just drives you crazy? I know that like 280E is a thorn in everyone's side, safe banking. I mean, all the above. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Again, I really think for me, it's more of the packaging. Like I'm so focused on the consumer the experience of it. So for me, the packaging and the different requirements in every new market, just like redesigning packaging, making space for a different sticker, or do we need a Mylar baggie for this guy? Like, it's just, that's tricky. Do you have any recommendations as how like you would go about addressing some of those issues to make it better? Um, I think just really making sure that you educate yourself on what the rules are in every state because I think like I've heard of experiences that people have or like maybe they even haven't had it yet but it's going to happen where they have compliant packaging in one state but it's not compliant in three other states so if they want to enter that state they're going to have to totally redesign their packaging and packaging is expensive and the minimums are high so I think you know people are going to have to reckon with that yep all right last kind of as we wrap up here question pull out your crystal ball Brett, what do you think with the draft legislation that's been proposed? Like, how does this all play out? I mean, I love how I have a crystal ball. Look, I don't know. Obviously, I, I don't. I would never pretend to know. But I feel like when you're talking about something that pretend to know, <laughs> I don't do that. Um, so I think when you have something that's like the job creator that we speculate and the revenue creator that we speculate and something that's good for you and that's been used as a medicine for hundreds of years and that's you know can help with the opioid crisis can it just I mean I could go get on my soapbox about all the virtues of the plant like it's just it's hard for me to imagine that that this wouldn't be federally legalized sooner than we think like how could it not be part of our lives in the way that alcohol is and obviously um prescription drugs. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's just like how we're going to go about doing it. And hopefully the federal government does it the right way, because I think that, that that draft plan has still has a lot of work uh, in it. But hey, it's a first it's a first pass. Right. So small miracles. That's right. That's right. Well, hey, I want to give you the floor. Any last words, thoughts, comments? Get on your soapbox. I really like your cheer shirt. That's one. <laughs> Thank um, you. No, you know, I just got back from Illinois today. Uh, we're launching Illinois next month. We're pretty excited about that. It's such a cool state and like did a big dispensary tour. So I don't know. I'm excited about that. It's not exactly soapboxy, but just shout out to no, Illinois. No, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and then Massachusetts right after. Cheers. So those, so that will be a total of three because you're currently in California, right? So that would be two that you're expanding to or? We're California and also Colorado. 
Got you. Okay. Yeah, so that's, we have a, man, that's good. That's good expansion right there. I think so. I, we're super excited about uh, Illinois and Mass. We're just excited about the newer states because California is like very hard to penetrate. Obviously, it's it's been wrecked for a long time. There's a ton of brands there, a ton of cool dispensaries. So we're excited about the newer states and and just you know putting a little foothold down. What does your consumer base look like? Is it primarily women? I mean, is there an age? Like what, what, who, who's like your sweet spot? It's primarily women. I mean, we, we talk to women. We try to talk to women. So as I said, we're all women internally and we talk about being kind of as for women by women. Um, we just think that nobody is really talking to women of all demographics and ages. Um, but we also talk to dudes that want to buy for their sister or buy for their girlfriend, like, you know, in the States where that's legal when you can purchase for someone else. Um, but yeah, I just think that like, women smoke a lot of cannabis. And I think there's a lot of kind of future customers that we're talking to now that are excited about cannabis. They want to learn more about cannabis. They want to, you know, drink less, smoke more. So those are our girls. Yeah. Any particular products you want to shout out? Um, no, no, I don't think so. Just really yeah. excited about our expansions and our, our new flower pre-rolls in Illinois coming up next month. Nice. Awesome. Well, Hey, where can people find y'all's website and social media if they want to learn more? That's a great question. So our website is Edie Parker flower. And our Instagram, I'm only looking it up because we've got some dashes sometimes. No, this one's good. This one's just at Edie Parker Flower, all one word, E-D-I-E-P-A-R-K-E-R -E -E Flower. So check us out. It's super colorful, fun. You'll have a good time. It really is. Yeah, the website's amazing. The products look awesome. Brett, really appreciate your time. Really uh, look forward to seeing what y'all do and uh, the impact that you make bringing the fashion and cannabis industries together because that's a beautiful thing. Kevin, you're awesome. I love your positivity. Say hi to your wife. Thank you so much. And uh, have a great evening. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And I will tell her hi. Yes. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Yes. And thank you all for listening. Bye.